Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 13th of An Italian Knitting Podcast. My name is Francesca, I am an Italian knitter. Today we are attempting something that has never been tried before on this channel, which is recording with the back camera on my phone. <laughs> I usually record with my front camera, meaning that I also see myself in the screen and it's so tempting to look at myself but it doesn't seem like I'm looking at you, it seems like I'm looking on the side, so hopefully this turning around of the camera will make things more personal. We'll see. Is that awkward that I'm looking at you? We'll see how it goes. It seems like on my podcast I never like introduce myself, really, <laughs> but I'm gonna try to get into the habit of doing so. I'm Francesca, I live in Italy with my husband and with my two-year-old daughter, we have a cat as well. I'm a software engineer and I work from home. I love knitting, what a surprise. I also love reading and roller skating. I haven't actually posted in more than a month, which is not super usual for me. I tend to post um, every maybe three weeks or so. I think that's a good amount of knitting material for me to discuss and walk you through. However, September, which is the month that's almost at the end, has been super busy. It's a month where there's no vacation time, unlike August. And also my daughter started daycare after the summer break and she got sick almost right away. So I didn't knit as much and I didn't find time to record, but I'm here now. And I think we could just jump into finished objects. I'm wearing the Ingrid Summer Sweater by Gregoria Fibers. This has been so fun to knit. The eyelets are so addicting. You do like an eyelet section and then you do a little bit of stockinette and then another eyelet section and you repeat this. And so it's just so motivating because you want to get to the next section. This is a dropped shoulder construction. This is actually my first drop shoulder sweater that I've ever knit. And it is probably not my favorite to knit because you have a good amount of flat knitting. You do the front panel and the back panel and then you join them together and then you can knit in the round for the body but you do have a good amount of knitting flat which is not my favorite because of the purling aspect of it i'm finding the fit quite comfortable i've always ever done raglan sweaters and i'm interested to see if i'll reach for this sweater over and over it seems like pretty comfortable there's a good amount of ease around my armpit which i enjoy and it seems like the fit is actually quite similar to what i would get with a raglan sweater maybe an oversized raglan sweater in terms of size i actually went down a size compared to the recommended ease for my bus circumference so i should have based on the recommended ease for my bus circumference, I should have knit the size S. Instead, I went with the extra small XS. And I feel like this still gives me a good amount of ease and it's not tight in the slightest. I've been using Sunnes Garn Line, which is my top favorite summer yarn ever, I think. <laughs> I have a good amount of leftovers and I actually have more than a single ball left over because I've knitted like the sleeves in parallel with the body so I was doing like a little bit on the sleeves a little bit on the body a little bit on the sleeves and so I have like three different balls left over I think the combined weight might be equal or a little bit more than one skein and so I feel like I could have knitted this without buying 10 balls with just nine balls would have been enough for my size which again is extra small. The leftover yarn will join the rest of my Sundance Garn Line leftovers from other projects and hopefully they'll make something at some point next summer. Hopefully um, like a complete project made with stripes or something similar, something for my daughter. I don't know. The blue one is a leftover from my Peacock Tea 
and the green is left over from Oh, the green is left over from my Soho top that I test knitted. The sweater has twisted rib on all the ribbings and I guess I should really call it half twisted rib because you only twist the knit stitches. For some reason in my mind now it's ingrained that twisting the knits makes it twisted rib but it's half twisted rib. I really love it in terms of the looks. I hated knitting on it. I guess it just it takes more time and effort to twist your stitches while you knit them, but I think the look is so beautiful. And the bottom rib has the same detail, I guess the same ribbing. And for the first time, probably last time as well, I did tubular bind offs around everything. All the edges are tubular bind off can I say bind off I used tubular bind offs for all the edges and I'm not sure if they look massively better than a surprisingly stretchy bind off or something similar it's also possible that I'm not the best yet since I've never practiced a lot <laughs> I don't know I mean they look good and they're like very stretchy they don't bother me while wearing them so i guess I'm not sure i'll use this bind off for all my future sweaters but i guess if the pattern calls for it i'll make an effort to try and do that Gregoria Fibers actually has a top version of this same design and I think it'll be on my list for next summer. I, now I'm done with summer sweaters, summer tops, I guess plant-based fibers, that's what I'm trying to say. And so I will not do anything similar this year, but next summer I think this might be on my list in its top version without the sleeves. I have heard that, that the pattern for the top has a little bit of a bigger armholes so i want to keep in mind to maybe do some modification to keep it a little bit like cinched in or reasonable i guess i didn't make any modifications to this sweater i believe i finished it a little while ago now like a, a few weeks so i kind of forgot all the teeny tiny details but I remember it was lots of fun to knit in terms of the eyelet pattern and using the yarn was a dream in terms of being a plant-based fiber. I mean, I still prefer to knit with wool, merino, mohair, but like for being a plant-based fiber, this again is my favorite. And while the body and the sleeves were so fun, the twisted rib is such a slog. I had to watch, I had to, oh, such an effort, but like I had to watch lots of knitting podcasts, movies, TV shows, and knit on it while doing something else because otherwise it would have been just so boring. Why do I complain so much today? I don't know. <laughs> That's me. I think this is a perfect fabric and perfect sweater for this season. In Italy, it's like kind of fall but it's not cold enough to actually wear wool sweaters yet. So I think this is spot on. Like I finished it at the right time and I think I'll be able to use it next summer, next spring. You can layer it on top of other tops. So maybe like put a shawl on it around your neck. I don't know, accessorize it, I guess. The other finished object that I have, it's something much more summer, summery and they are my Hemingway shorts by Lara from The Knitting Booth. These were quite fun and quick to knit, which I wasn't expecting. I thought that like knitting shorts was going to be quite complicated and convoluted, I guess, because there are a lot of hems, a lot of, I don't know, increases and decreases, and instead they were just pure fun. I knit them in drops bell, this has a very very similar composition to the Sunness Garlene, which is what I'm wearing, but it's much cheaper, I think half the price. However, knitting on this, I could
could feel that this was a little bit rougher on my hands. So not as enjoyable, but the content is very similar. This is cotton, viscose and linen. The washed product, I guess the washed finished object is still pretty soft. I would say this is a little bit softer, but for shorts, I think this is totally fine. Actually, hopefully they'll be a little bit sturdier. They'll hold up while wearing them. I guess you sit on shorts, so you treat them a little bit more roughly than a sweater. So I'm, I'm happy to have tried Drops Bell on these ones and I'll see how it goes. I actually applied to test knit these ones a few months ago and I wasn't picked, which is totally fine. <laughs> However, I was kind of keeping an eye on all the test knitters, finished objects and all the versions on Instagram and I actually fell in love with Terinka's version. I'll insert a picture, of course, of her version had a beautiful tie at the waist and as you can tell i took inspiration slash copied her because i loved it so much and it, actually all my store-bought shorts have some sort of tie at the waist i find them so convenient because you can kind of tie them a little bit more or a little bit less i feel like sometimes i tuck a shirt inside them and so maybe I don't need them as tight so I'll keep the tie a little bit looser or sometimes just I ate too much and I want them a little bit looser around my waist so I don't know if I had to explain what a tie does but sorry this is my thought process at the time so I was like Terinka I am gonna do exactly what you did and instead of using an elastic inside the waist like the pattern suggests I'll just take inspiration from your picture and use a tie instead and I, I did this on an Instagram story where I tagged her and she was like, oh, I'm glad that I inspired you. However, pay attention that I used an elastic and a tie. She was so kind and so quick to get back to me. I think she wanted to make sure that I still used an elastic inside the waist to keep the shape, which totally makes sense. But I guess I didn't see the elastic in her picture, like looking very closely, zooming in. And so I'm glad that she made me notice that. And even Lara, the designer herself, uh, reached out to me on Instagram saying, you need to put an elastic. Or I guess you don't need to, but they'll hold their shape a lot better if you do put an elastic. And so just for the sake of it, since I have it, <laughs> this was the type of elastic that I used. I bought it at my local grocery store while i was buying grocery there was an aisle with like sewing equipment and elastic and so i just grabbed it do you care about this i don't think so but it is one meter long and 30 millimeters tall so three centimeters as you can tell and i think the pattern calls for slightly taller elastic but that's what i could find and i think it the elastic is, is good enough for, for my height. So you actually start from the top and you knit down towards the legs. And so this is beautiful because you get the elastic part done right away. And so you actually knit the elastic inside a tube here. And so you're good and you're like, oh, I'm so good at this. I'm going to go continue. And you can also knit the legs as long as you want. You can try the shorts while you knit on them. So that's always very convenient. I made them, I think, slightly longer than the pattern called for, but the pattern just gives you a recommendation. The pattern doesn't know how tall you are or your preferences. So you do you and so try them on if you're knitting them and just adjust based on how they look on you and the feel on you and for the tie i have notes in my ravelry project page if you'd like to do a similar modification but what i've done is while knitting this part the, the waist part i did yarn over and i knit two together to create the holes and for the tie this is a three stitch i cord i just knitted it with the same exact yarn that i used for the shorts and that's it. <laughs> I did other a couple of modifications removing complexity of the pattern. So the pattern has pockets 
I didn't put them in a little bit because I, I didn't want anything complicated to knit on but also because I feel like they add a little bit of bulk to the shorts and also I plan to wear these in the house and I don't have anything to put inside the pocket like I have my phone sometimes on me but I'll just place it on the table or whatever <laughs> and I also didn't add any short row shaping on the back like based on your shape or your preference you can actually add more fabric at the back so that the shorts come back a little bit higher in the back so that they cover your butt can i say butt the pattern helps you with that i will also say that the pattern is a little bit intimidating when you first open it so in case you bought it and you opened and you're like oh there are too many pages and i will it's like so complicated it is not it's actually a lot of options so it gives you options for lots of things based on your size based on maybe your waist is a lot smaller than your hips and so it gives you modification they were like fairly quick and easy to knit don't get intimidated by the many pages that are in the pattern it's just there to help you not to hinder you i guess i had five bowls of drop spell and i ended up using four i have one left over so um, i could have probably knit the leg longer but i didn't care about that so i'll keep these together <laughs> with the rest of the leftover the sun is garlene leftovers because again the composition is exactly the same and so maybe this is a sizable amount for a summer knit for next summer okay that's it works in progress i have a test knit and the test knit is for emily from gently chaotic knits i love her name and her podcast in general but gently chaotic knits fits her so well i think she's just so nice to listen to her podcast is so relaxing but it's also not perfect i think like mine like just like she talks about other stuff I don't know, it's just very relaxing and relatable and I recommend her podcast if you're looking for a new one. And so I'm knitting for her, I guess not for her, I'm knitting it for me. I'm knitting to test her dad's sweater pattern. The pattern is inspired by the sweaters that her dad used to wear, I guess still wears to these days, um, kind of oversized. I have done a good amount of progress. I put the body on hold. And as you know, I don't know if you know, but like if you remember, I usually knit everything on the garment other than the ribbing. So I do not do the ribbing and then I wash and block and then I'll see how much it grew and I then add the ribbing or maybe knit a little bit of more stocking before the ribbing based on how much the, the garment stretched. And so that's why this is on hold without any ribbing. So I'll, I'll wait to wash this and see how much it grows. And I'm on the sleeve. I'm actually using some new needles. These are the Chaibu blue shorties. I even kept the <laughs> the label because i bought them super super recently they arrived maybe like a week ago no even less these are twist shorties this is the blue set they also have a red set with with much smaller sizes these go from us 4 3.5 millimeters to us 8 5 millimeters so these i think are all the sizes that i usually use for garments sweaters anything like that. If you wanted to use these for socks, for example, they have, as I mentioned, a red set, which is, I guess, looks exactly like this, but it is in color red. <laughs> and they'll have smaller sizes, I think from US 3 down. So perfect for socks, for example. They have two sets of needles per size. So they have a longer version and a less long version, <laughs> two versions. I think the longer ones are still very, very comfortable to use. These super teeny tiny ones, I'm not yet sure, but I've not been using them for long enough to make an actual review. So don't take my opinion as a final opinion, but I'll, I'll get back to you. 
I plan to use this to knit sleeves. So this is the first sleeve that I've tried knitting with these short circulars. And, and my usual alternative is Magic Loop, which I think I'm quite proficient at in the sense that it doesn't bother me. I don't feel slow down too much by having to juggle the cable every time. Uh, we'll see. I wanted to try this because I've seen many people using them and telling me that this is much smoother because you just go round and round and round and you never stop. So we'll see how it goes. So far it's okay. <laughs> Back to the pattern. <laughs> so the pattern is not a raglan construction as you can see so it's not fully knit in the round from the very beginning you actually similar to the sweater i'm wearing you knit the back and then you knit the front and then you join together for the body and the collar is actually picked up and then you knit a, a good size tube and you fold it inwards and then you should technically knit it down so you should bind off the collar while also knitting the stitches with the stitches that are at the base of the neck so you bind off and knit down at the same time and it's a little bit fiddly but i think it can be done the problem is that i did that and the final result was very tight i could not pass my head through i guess i technically did once and then i was stuck and then i had to kind of juggle it a lot to take it out so i unpicked of course that bind off and what i've done is i actually cast off using icelandic bind off which makes it very very stretchy and so i pinned it down very loosely and what i will do is just i will sew the collar folded like this and call it a day. <laughs> I didn't want to go again through the process of knitting down the collar. This way I think it will take me a little bit less and then I can kind of adjust, I think, the circumference of the collar a little bit better. I really like the look. I don't think I can try it on. Maybe I can. Let's do it. <laughs> definitely still counts as a work in progress but i think the fit is beautiful there's a good amount of ease here around the armpit again i really like it and i'm sure with blocking it'll relax even more and my stitches will be evened out a little bit better i am using knitted for olive merino plus soft silk mohair in the color rust which is a perfect autumny fall shade i bought it during the past winter so i kind of kept during the summer i kept it there and didn't do anything with it of course but i think it was the perfect yarn for this project however before remembering that i had this in my stash i actually went and bought a different yarn for this project i bought drops puna so drops puna fits the recommended yarn for this pattern a little bit better so this pattern actually calls for i think light worsted single strand of yarn and i felt that based on the characteristics details of this yarn it was a perfect match and the softness is amazing the color i really like however this is 100 percent alpaca while the pattern calls for 100 percent i think more of a woolly fiber um, but this being 100% alpaca, I actually swatched with it and I found it very soft. However, in the back of my mind, I'm like, hmm, 100% alpaca will not retain its shape as much. So maybe for a garment is not the best option. Hmm, who knows? But the description for this yarn, the official drops description actually mentions that you can knit garments, sweaters. It's, it's perfect for everything. Um, but I did kind of ask on Instagram and to a couple of friends in real life and I think a good amount of people said mm, it's a bit risky, it might like stretch, it might not hold its shape you might not love the result or I guess the result might be a little bit unexpected in terms of like the drape of the fabric it, it might be a little bit more slouchy and drapey compared to a sweater knitted in a regular wool and so it was like Mm -mm -mm. I don't want to go through the effort of knitting a sweater and 
being stressed about the final result while knitting on it and also because this is a test knit so I want Emily to have beautiful finished photos of my finished object and I was like okay I'm gonna put it aside like I'm doing now for the future I'll find a project this is what I, I thought at the time and so I grabbed the yarn that was perfectly fine for this pattern that I already had in stash the only thing is that I have 100 meters less than what the pattern calls for. So this rust yarn, I have it in a sweater quantity for me, my usual sweater quantity. For example, for the No Frills sweater in a size S. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. And I can always order, I guess, extra balls if I find myself not completing maybe the ribbing and if I don't have enough. Hopefully I have enough, I think I will, but I can always grab an extra skein of each from the Knitting for Olive website. And I guess at the time I'll have to also order something else. <laughs> so it's a win-win situation. Do I look absolutely beautiful in this non-finished sweater? Probably not. I'll revert back to the Ingrid summer sweater. Cool. Okay, back to the drops puna. So I had this yarn lying around and I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not gonna knit a sweater with it, but I, it's so soft that I want to have it like around my face. Um, and so I was like, oh, maybe like a shawl, a scarf, something like that. I'll find a use for it. And then at the same time, I realized I wanted something very, very relaxing to knit on while watching TV shows, watching my daughter, but also something that I would be able to knit in the dark <laughs> while waiting for my daughter to fall asleep at night in her room. She likes to fall asleep in her bed and with like the lights off. But sometimes we are there like maybe chatting, I sing to her. I'm a very bad singer, but she doesn't mind, I think. Or maybe she's too nice to tell me that she doesn't like my voice, but... <laughs> so I started the world's most simple wrap. This is the width of the wrap and it'll be quite long. I guess that's what I envision. This is all garter stitch, garter stitch. So you knit every row and it's so drapey and so soft. It is 100% inspired by Rebecca's wrap. Uh, Rebecca from the Crea Bea, she knit a similar wrap for her mom. And she knitted actually in drops brushed alpaca silk. I have a very, very teeny tiny bowl here. Um, her version is in black, so this is definitely nothing similar to that yarn. This is so fluffy, so I think a wrap in this yarn would have been absolutely amazing. So I asked her notes about like, ooh, <laughs> what did you do for your wrap? She winged it a little bit without following like pattern word by word, so she sent me her notes. I did swatch with the brushed alpaca silk. However, I found that it wasn't as super pleasant to knit on it single-stranded. I've always ever used this in addition with another yarn, so side by side, like alongside, double-stranded with something else. And by itself, I think the result would be lovely, but it's not as enjoyable to knit with. It feels like knitting with mohair, single-stranded. So for a relaxing knit, something that I really wanted to enjoy, this didn't feel like the perfect choice. So I unraveled my swatch and I finally decided to use a drop spoon that was lying around. I don't know why I actually didn't do this sooner, but following Rebecca's recommendations, I actually looked at the elementary wrap by Pearl Soho and the wrap by Pearl Soho is actually a stockinette stitch, so you knit and purl, knit and purl, and mine is garter stitch like Rebecca's. What I've done for the last stitch of each row is I slip it purlwise, just to give it a slightly better edge. I mean, it's not, it doesn't feel like a very polished edge by any means, but it is what I love to knit, so something very relaxing. And so now this is what I knit on while my daughter falls asleep, which is perfect. I've knit on this while watching TV 
or sometimes even while working, like if I'm watching something or thinking about something, I can just kind of have this in my hands and knit on it and not having to look or think. And so it's just a perfect, perfect knit. For many people, it would be very, very boring. However, if you're looking for something mindless, this is your thing. I have some notes in my Ravelry page, uh, mostly what I just talked to you about, but if you want them in a written form, they're there. I have 10 balls of the Drops Puna, which should be enough to knit the entire wrap to a size that feels nice and cozy. And I know that with locking, it will stretch even more, or that at least I'll be able to stretch it if I want it longer for some reason. I guess this is somehow maybe my reminder that if you want something relaxing, where you don't have to think about it, you don't have to really look intensely, you have my permission. Don't feel like you always have to knit on something super complicated, productive, challenging. Sometimes you can do this. You can do a gutter stitch project. That's my permission in case you needed it. And then I have a project that's not really in progress, but I swatched for it. So is it in progress? Who can tell? Not in progress. The yarn is again Knitting for Olive, Merino plus Soft Silk Mohair. The color is Autumn. And this is my swatch. I swatch with a couple of different needle sizes. Um, so soft and the swatch is for the peacock sweater by Lynette or Lene Hall. Me and IC from Orsa Knits we're hosting a very very chill knit along where you can knit any pattern by this designer and we have a lovely Instagram group where just people chat send pictures for the knit along, I knit the peacock tee earlier this summer and my second and last project will be the peacock sweater. I will not finish it in time by end of this month, which is when the knit along officially ends. So I'll just keep on knitting on the sweater throughout next month and hopefully the people want to stay in our Instagram group and keep chatting about stuff even though the knit along is over. We'll see. I don't know. So you'll see more about the peacock sweater soon, I guess in the next episode. The thing that I'm thinking, <laughs> the thing that I'm thinking is that I need or slash want to add short rows at the back of the sweater because this pattern doesn't have short rows. So the result would be a sweater that looks exactly the same, looked from the back or from the front. However, I do like when the neckline is a little bit higher in the back and leaves your neck a little bit uncovered in the front, I, th I think it's more comfortable. So I should be able to add shorter shaping to the pattern, even though the instructions are not there. So we'll see. <laughs> I hope it will turn out looking very good. Last and least. <laughs> in the sense that it is my least favorite knit at the moment <laughs> is my never finished cumulus tee in this is not the right full band <laughs> in knitting for olive pure silk i mean the fabric is lovely if it was still summer i would love to knit on this over and over and the fact though is that i've touched wool and mohair and I love the feeling of knitting with those fibers much more in this season, autumnal season. And so this has not been getting any love almost. I finished the body, the neckline, I need to knit a little bit of sleeve so I should be able to do that. Will I do it is a different story that you've seen this many many times before so I will not bore you with any more about this. Tea. The pattern is lovely. If you're looking for a shirt to knit on, this is perfect. I do really like the final result. I have two already. And so yeah, I would recommend. Maybe don't do plant-based fibers in the autumn because they will not bring you joy. Now I have an acquisition 
section. So technically the Chaibu needle set and the Autumn Knitting for Ali combination are also acquisitions, but we talked about this before. Acquisitions that I've not mentioned are a couple of the most beautiful teeny tiny bowls. Should I have said that? Most beautiful yarns. <laughs> This is Knitting for Olive Compatible Cashmere and I added this to my order of the autumn colorway that I just showed and these are so soft. I bought this for scarf number one by my favorite things knitwear and I didn't think I was gonna fall in the trend of teeny tiny dainty scarves but apparently I'm there. And I want to have one as well. <laughs> it looks very soft, it's in the color powder and I really think it'll be lovely to have it around my face. Then my husband went on a work trip in San Francisco Bay Area. He brought me yarn. Aww. Such a lovely gift. I was very happy. And so he visited a store in San Francisco, which is called Love Fest Fibers. And this is actually one of their own yarns. They have a lovely website and they even have free patterns that are based off of these yarns. And so I think I'll follow one of them. They have lovely cowls. It's hand spun, so it's not super perfectly regular and consistent. Hand spun yak from Tibet. Color is alabaster. Last but not least, I bought a magazine, a knitting magazine slash book. I promised myself not to really go and buy lots of knitting magazines because I have quite a few and they're just lingering like they're there in my chest and you don't see, <laughs> but there's a chest there with like my knitting supplies and a lot of magazines or books are there because I much prefer like browsing Ravelry to find patterns or just watch podcast, knitting podcasts and get recommendations. However, I think the Ready Set Raglan speaks to me. I think this is my knitting book. So it's supposed to be a book with a lot of patterns and adjustments and advice and stitch patterns that you can kind of mix and match and combine to create lots of raglan sweaters. So hopefully I'll be using this to maybe just like get inspiration. Um, there's like color combinations. There are different suggestions for hands, colors, ribbings. To really like, I think mix and match is the right way to put this. They have a good amount of patterns I'll show you my favorite. Actually, I have a couple of favorites. This is one, like the texture. It's lovely. If I had to pick one, I think this raglan design. It's lovely. This is the Lobelia pattern. I assume that you can find the individual patterns also for sale on Ravelry. I am not sure. I'll link everything that I can find in the description below in case you're interested, including the, a link to this book. I don't have a review yet because I haven't needed anything from this book, but like just, I don't know, basking in the ideas and inspiration is lovely. Ooh, look at this end pages. Pretty cute. That's it. That concludes the actual knitting related content. I'll stick around for a few more minutes if you want to. <laughs> I have a couple of plans for next month that are knitting related somehow and I'm quite excited about. So I'll be in Minneapolis beginning of October. For the first time in my life, I've never been there. I'm going for work. However, I've already looked at the map and there are a good amount of yarn stores. It depends how much time I actually have throughout the day 
to dedicate to yarn shopping, hopefully a good amount, but I don't know um, how many work commitments and kind of work related dinners and things I'll end up going to. So if you have recommendations around knitting related things in Minneapolis, uh, stores that I really should go to even if they're slightly far away from my Airbnb please let me know also even if you have non knitting recommendations they're like more than welcome restaurants shops anything like that I would love to record videos while I'm in Minneapolis because I think I'll have a good amount of time the airbnb or just like walking around or biking around the city so i'll try to record something i don't know if i'll record another podcast since i won't have a lot of knitting content or knitting updates <laughs> because i'm going quite soon in a little more than a week but maybe i can record other content like a chat or like showing you around um, yarn stores if i end up going let me know if you have ideas. The other knitting related event throughout my October is I'll be at Knit Italy. Knit Italy is a conference, knitting conference that happens in the north of Italy. I don't know if it's a yearly, I think they skipped a year during COVID, but I think ideally this would be a yearly convention or yearly event. And there's lots of workshops, chats, vendors who were selling yarn and i'll be hosting a one hour chat about how to read english patterns for italian speaking people i have lots of ideas on designers who have english patterns that are quite accessible maybe free and i hope i can give lots of ideas to people I will be sharing like some tips and tricks on how to actually translate a pattern if English is not super comfortable to you. So like tools that you can use to translate tutorials and vocabulary terms. Uh, but I also want to give people lots of ideas in terms of like where they can find English patterns that are accessible, maybe they're free. If you are Italian, or even if you're not Italian, but if you're going to this conference, Knit Italy at the and the second half of October. I would love for you to say hello. I think that might be it. Thank you for sticking around. I'm so, so curious to see how this video turned out when I transferred it onto my computer in terms of like, am I actually looking to you or am I looking somewhere else? What if I'm completely blurry? Like what if this video is completely blurry because I wasn't able to see properly that it wasn't in focus? I know that I'm recording because I put a teeny tiny mirror on the other side of my phone so that I can see that the phone is recording because there's a little red dot that tells me I'm recording but I cannot really see my face. So hopefully I was in focus this entire time. <laughs> Otherwise, good luck watching this. That's it, friends. I hope you're doing well. I hope this September treated you well. I know it's like time for new projects, starts, schools, maybe back to work after some vacation time. So I hope you're doing the best you can, but without stressing too much. Me and my Gar Stitch wrap say goodbye and we'll see you soon. Bye.